Welcome to the feature overview of our new processor, the S8, and some of the features now available in our latest software release, Tessera version 3. These include HDR, dynamic calibration, HFR, high frame rate tools, frame remapping, IP control of all processors, as well as ArtNet and SACN control for the S4 processor. This builds on a powerful suite of tools when working with LED panels on camera in a virtual production or XR stage environment, as well as other useful tools to further enhance your processor. Firstly, our new processor, the S8. This has all the features of the SX40 except processor to processor redundancy. The S8 has eight times one gigabit outputs and is capable of driving up to 4.5 million pixels in a 2U rack mountable unit. HDR, high dynamic range, is now supported on both our SX40 and S8 processors. We support HDR10, PQ and HLG. HDR content benefits from a wider colour gamut, deeper blacks and brighter, more saturated colours. HDR content can be received via HDMI 2.0, which will also include any metadata in the signal, or 12G SDI, which can carry the signal but without the metadata, meaning you will have to tell the processor what type of HDR you are currently receiving. You can find out more information on our in-depth feature spotlight on our website. To access the HDR options on the processor, Click the input source, such as HDMI, and then on the right hand side the options will be displayed. If you click the small arrow to the left of the HDMI status, more information can be displayed about your input. Here you can see how the input signal is formatted. We are currently receiving a 4K HDR PQ signal, which is using the REC 2020 color space. We can see this information as we are using HDMI and the signal containing metadata for our processor to adjust the signal automatically. The processor has also detected a max CLL of 4000 nits for the input content and has adjusted the level to best suit the panels being used. If there was invalid metadata in our HDMI signal, or we were using SDI, which cannot contain metadata, we can use the options here to set the values manually. You can also manually select the color space that the processor is going to be running in, or set a custom one from the Dynacal interface. Finally, we have the slider buttons and the histogram section that you were used to from previous versions of Tessera. Next, Let's move on to dynamic calibration, our new calibration system that can unleash the full potential of your LED panels. Dynamic calibration is available on all Tessera products and a more in-depth video can be found on our website. But to start, the interface can be found by clicking on the color button on the processor pipeline at the top. Panels must be measured with our Hydra calibration system to be compatible with dynamic calibration. At the bottom right, you will see the Dynacal icon to access the interface. Using legacy calibration, LED brightness and color saturation must be limited to the weakest performing LED to achieve good uniformity. However, Using dynamic calibration, we are able to reach the absolute maximum achievable brightness and saturation for each individual LED. In the interface, we currently have three predefined color spaces for our input, REC 2020, DCI-P3 and REC 709. These are represented by the lighter triangles on the color space. The white triangle represents the achievable colours that our panels can display. The processor has placed its colour targets for the input in the corners of the REC 2020 triangle, and our panels are set to match input. 
Because the panel is only capable of achieving some of these targets, it will do its best to reach the unachievable colours. However, this may cause some sparkle. If we switch the option to highlight pixels that are outside the colour gamut being represented by the input, we can see what this is affecting. This shows a zebra pattern on the pixels that are out of gamma. We can then change our output to achievable, which will display square targets at the edges of our achievable area for our panels. And it's possible to limit the panel so nothing will be out of the panel's capabilities. A few areas of colour are still unachievable. If this was an issue, we can tweak our colour targets even further by moving the squares inside the white triangle till the zebra pattern is reduced. We can also do this for the brightness by moving our slider at the top. This allows us to artificially raise the upper limit of the brightness on our content, as most pixels in the video image are not at 100% brightness. By doing this, you can make a dimmer screen look a lot brighter. Any pixel that Overdrive makes brighter than what it is capable of doing will get restricted and hence display the zebra pattern if this is enabled. It's also possible to use a slider at the bottom to choose between having more colours available or more brightness on your screen, which will sacrifice some colours. Live Control on the S4 now supports ArtNet and SACN should you wish to control some of the features of the processor from a lighting console or any other ArtNet or SACN source. This can be accessed from the Live Control menu. A simple but heavily requested feature is fade times on your blackout button, which can now be specified by the user. In previous software versions, we were able to go to 144 frames a second, but now we can go to a massive 250 frames a second using HFR+. Currently, this only works with certain panels, but more are always being enabled, so it's important to keep your fixture packs up to date. HFR Plus can be very useful not only to get smoother visuals in things like eSports, but also in situations where things are filmed in slow motion, which can cause artefacts on your LED panels when panels don't display a full frame of video on camera. With features like frame rate multiplication, this ensures a full frame is always displayed on your LED panels due to it being displayed at a higher frame rate to the camera shutter. If we take this concept slightly further, instead of having duplicates at each frame, we can substitute frames for black frames, which reduces the motion blur that occurs in your eye due to persistence of vision, which you get on things like car and aircraft simulators, or white frames to allow visibility for those taking part in low light recordings, which on camera retains the dark image. Another use for this could be having multiple camera angles where the first frame would be one angle and then for the second frame would be the same scene with a different angle being displayed on your LED. Finally, if you were to use this on a multi-language broadcast, your first frame could display one language, the second a different language, and so on. You can then send the same broadcast in different languages at the same time. These are just some of the things Brompton is doing to lead the way in LED panel control when using with modern production techniques. Finally, to complement those video performance enhancements, all processors now support HTTP and TCP control, meaning both status monitoring and remote control of the most key screen parameters such as brightness or input source are available. This also opens up many possibilities for third party and custom control systems like Stream Dex or Crestron. Finally, a warning when installing Tessera version 3. Tessera HD processors, the M2, T1 and S4, must be running processor firmware 2.3.2 or later prior to upgrading to V3. 
Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoy the new features brought to you by Tessera version 3.